Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Haris Atta and welcome to my channel. The topic of today's video is standard proctor test. So I will give you the brief introduction uh, about the standard proctor test, why it's conducted and what's the process and how the calculations are done. Okay, so the standard proctor test is basically done to, to check, uh, to find the optimum moisture content OMC and to find the maximum dry density okay that these two things uh, which are which is our goal to check in in the standard proctor test so why these things are necessary because we need to optimize the dry density of soil dry density of soil is optimized like to, to get the maximum value of the dry density we need to compact the soil so coming back to the compaction what is compaction and why it's done compaction is uh, basically the removal of air voids from the soil sample for example we are taking a unit volume unit volume of a particular point unit volume where in which there is soil is enclosed you are considering just a unit volume so the soil mass is cons consists of water air and itself soil particles so it's a homogeneous mass which makes uh, a homogeneous volume what we need to do is if the air particles if the air voids sorry not particles the air voids are large then the soil is not denser and it will not serve the purpose for example if you are going to uh, if you are going to construct an highway you need to build an highway which is capable of withstand of heavy axle loads so if the soil is not fully compacted and if, 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 if it had voids then it the soil mass may contains the soil project or overall the project may deform and the soil will fail and the project will be failing so the uh, you might have seen like in in the field uh, the sheep rollers and different kind of rollers are being uh, are working to just in order to ensure that the soil is fully compacted so what is compaction uh, the compaction is the removal of air voids we are mechanically stabilizing the soil structure and we are externally compacting the soil removing the air voids and making it more denser and more thicker and that's and that is how we can uh, we can achieve maximum dry density of the soil as well so coming back to the test standard proctor test it's done to find the optimum moisture content and maximum dry density and the and it follows the compaction process so how we will find the optimum moisture content and maximum dry density i will explain in this video so <clears throat> the process is very simple you have a mold with a detachable plate and the mold diameter is around four to six inches and the it has also a collar which fix on the top what you do is you take the soil sample you bring it to the lab so you can take the soil sample around 3.5 kgs you take the soil sample and you bring it to the lab if the soil is fine grain soil you, you should have to pass that material to you know, through sieve number four so after passing that material take, take approximately three three kgs or 3.5 kgs of passing materials through sieve number four after you have that material passed through sieve number four then you have to add three to four percent of water to that soil sample and mix it thoroughly after the soil is mixing mixed completely take take the soil sample and add it to the mold in three layers and you have to compact layer each layer by 25 number of blows through a rammer and whose uh, free fall height is 12 inches and the hammer weight is around 2.5 kgs okay so now you have uh, compacted the soil in the uh, in the mold now you remove the remove the collar remove the excess of the soil through straight edge and then weight weight of take the weight of the mold with compacted soil first of all weight of the mold with base plate which is w1 and the second one is the weight of the mold plus compacted soil which is w2 which you have now just compacted okay and then what you need to do is the you need to calculate the weight of the compacted soil the weight of the compacted soil is w which is the w2 minus w1 like you need to mine you need to subtract the weight of the mold from the 
uh, weight of the mold plus compacted soil in this way you can you get the weight of the compacted soil then you will find the bulk density how you will find it bulk density would be gamma b is equal to w divided by v v is the volume of the mold how you will find it the volume of the mold if the diameter of the mold is 4 inches and height is around 6 inches or 5 inches whatever you can you can measure that in the lab you can find the area and then multiply with the height in this way you can find the volume of the mold so that is how that is how you will find the volume and then how you will find dry density dry density is equal to gamma b bulk density or 1 plus w w is moisture content so once you have compacted the soil then take the sample from that compacted soil and determine the moisture content through the standard procedure by own dry method or whatever the method is feasible for you once you get the water content as well you have bulk density then add then put that values in this formula dry density is equal to gamma d is equal to gamma b over 1 plus w from here you will find one value okay so <clears throat> repeat that trial repeat that process twice thrice four times and in this way you get four values in the next trial what you have to do take that soil again remove it from the mold mix it with the remaining soil and then add three percent more water to that soil and mix it thoroughly and repeat the process and in this way you get the second value then remove the soil from the compacted so remove the soil from the mold and then add more three percent water in this way you have to repeat that process four to five times and then what you will get you will get gamma d and moisture content you, you will get moisture content on the x-axis and gamma d dry density on the y-axis dry density you have found from here and moisture content you have found from each trial so in each trial moisture content versus dry density you will find you will make a plot x y plot and moisture content you have found through the standard procedure and the dry density which you have found through this formula okay so you will find up you will you will check oh sorry you will get a plot like this what you will see in the start the dry density was low when you add water it increased when you add water it is it then still increased after that after further increasing the water content the dry density is decreased so why that happens it is because of the reason because uh, in the start uh, when the <clears throat> when there was no moisture added to the soil what happened the adhesion and the friction between soil particles it didn't uh, let the compaction process to uh, to to happen and the compaction was not fully done that's why the soil was not resisting the load that's why the maximum dry density was low when you further added the water then this then the added water became a source of the lubrication between the particles and then the particles itself they get they started to get more load so that is why they are more they, they became more denser after adding more water but if you continue adding more water what will happen uh, the water content will take place uh, the soil particles uh, and, and as you know the unit weight of water is less as compared to the unit weight of soil particle that is why when the homogeneous mass the volume which contains more water content and less soil particles its density will be decreased that is why we are getting this plot in the start we are getting density maximum dry density here after adding water it is increased and it suddenly decreased because of more adding more water so this was the reason so yes from here we can easily find optimum moisture content so the point where the density is maximum is maximum dry density and the point uh, where the max dry, uh, the dry density is maximum just plot a projection on the x-axis this will be your optimum moisture content so the optimum moisture content and maximum dry density is very uh, crucial to determine for the projects which are going to be which are going to happen uh, for any any geotechnical project project or any project related to soil so this this was all from today's topic so uh, i will be uploading more videos regarding civil engineering and their calculations and also the uh, practical tutorials so you can subscribe to my channel and stay tuned bye bye take care